later on Experimental, we'll be finding out how Australians feel about cane toads. I think we've got to kill them. But first, let's travel to Singapore, where they have a thing about chickens. Look at any menu in any restaurant in Singapore and you'll find that chicken, in all its unusual varieties, dominates the dishes. From chicken rice to phoenix claws, which are... Well, I think you can see what they are. But when they're not eating chickens, the citizens of Singapore seem to have pretty strong feelings about their welfare. At least, that would seem to be the case from research being carried out by Dr Chuk at Nanyang Technological University. When I was a, a, a little boy, uh, my grandfather had uh, a lot of chickens in the backyard and I was the only child and, a, and the only grandchild, so m most of my friends were chickens. <laughs> oh, that's sweet, I think. And it's shown, you know, by scientific tests that if you touch chickens, uh, they, they grow faster and they lay more eggs, and so they, there's a measure of, uh, of poultry pleasure, and it increases the poultry pleasure in a scientific way. The chicken Dr Chuck most likes to give poultry pleasure to is this cocky little chap, Chirp. With Dr Chuck hard at work in his lab, Chirp spends most of his days alone in his sad green research cage, deprived of the human caress he craves so much. But not for long. I wanted to develop a new type of system where no matter where you are in the world, whether you're off first or on the other side of the globe, you can actually pet, have, have a communication with your pet through touch. And this is why we developed this system. What Dr Chuck is talking about is poultry internet touching, or PIT. You see, TV and radio deal with sound and vision, but no one has managed to transmit touch like this before. If we touch ourselves, the signal is transmitted to our brain and we feel that uh, f feeling of uh, touch sensation. In this case here, we're using the internet as kind of a nerve fibre. Within our bodies, and chirps as well, lie thousands of nerve fibres and pressure-sensitive cells. So, when we pet our chickens, dogs or cats, their cells are stimulated and an electrical impulse travels up the nerves in their bodies to their brain and thus they feel the caress of their beloved owner. It's much the same with us. On each of our hands, we have upwards of 17,000 of these cells, so our touch is very sensitive. For Dr Chook's device, though, it's a bit more rough and ready. On the body of his remote chicken doll, he has placed five pressure-sensitive pads that detect when they are touched by him. That information is sent over the net to these vibrating widgets, placed in a handsome chicken suit. When the pads are touched by Dr Chuck, the widgets vibrate in the same place on the chicken's body. So what we have here is the actual uh, chicken jacket, and inside here we have sensors and also the touch mechanism. So when you put this on the chicken, it will feel the uh, touch remotely. So very simply, you just uh, get your pet chicken, and very comfortably uh, you put the jacket uh, and it's a very uh, lovely and soft material, so it feels very comfortable for the chicken. And that's basically it. It just wears this jacket and it will feel the touch from anywhere in the world. But hold on, Dr Chook. Touch is a two-way thing. It's no good simply touching Chirp. We need to get an idea of how the poor bird is feeling. So what happens is that in the backyard, we are tracking the pet chicken with a camera and it sends the signal through the internet and then this uh, moving mechanism moves the doll according to the actual position of the chicken in the backyard. So I can see the pet chicken move in, represented by the pet doll here. You can actually feel the chicken? Yes, I can. I can actually change my touch according to how the chicken is moving and I can also affect the chicken's movement by, by my touch. So how does the chicken feel about this? Dr Chook worked this out by having Chirp repeatedly choose between two coloured doors, behind one of which lay his stylish chicken suit. What happens is that if it goes into the blue door, it will receive food and water and no uh, poultry internet uh, touching. <laughs> and if it goes into the red door, it will see receive the same food and water, but 10 minutes 
of the uh, poultry and internet jacket touching. <laughs> Now, over a period of one month, we found that over 80% of the time, the chicken preferred the door where it will receive the poultry internet system. So we can actually, using this technique, prove that the chicken preferred to use that uh, poultry internet jacket, and so it actually is feeling some kind of pleasure. <laughs> it might only be a few little pads vibrating, but it's enough to give chirp pleasure something that's floating Dr. Chook's boat back in the lab. It feels very exciting. It feels like I am actually physically interacting with my real pet, even though this pet could be in the other side of the world. All this human-chicken interaction might seem odd, or indeed somewhat disturbing. But luckily for him, caressing chickens remotely is not the sole purpose of Dr. Chook's research. This is just the first system. What we're really interested in is the wide area of human-to-pet communication using digital media. So what we see in the future is that people use this for their cats and for their dogs and their pet hamster. Cats, dogs, hamsters, wives, girlfriends, complete strangers. <laughs>